broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across the island chain. When you do get a really large infestation, the decibel level can just get out of control. Koki frogs have descended on Waimea in Hawaii Island, and residents are taking matters into their own hands. Plus, a native of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, finds his jazz voice in, of all places, Hawaii. Also, a woman discovers she has a life-threatening heart condition while out surfing. Discover a sanctuary for indigenous Hawaiian plants on the windward side of Oahu and meet a ceramics instructor who teaches his students about life. Find out why a young student from Beijing, China pulled up stakes to start a new life in Hawaii. And find out how Recycle Hawaii is getting people to create art out of items that might otherwise end up in landfills. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Waina Intermediate School in West Oahu, home of the Junior Sea Riders. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no. Can do. Aloha and welcome to Waina Intermediate School, here on the island of Oahu. Waina Intermediate first opened its doors in 1966, and today it serves 907th and 8th graders, stretching from Nanakuli to Makaha. Today, we're going to take you through the programs and events that go on here on our campus. Our first story takes us to Waimea on Hawaii Island, where students from Hawaii Preparatory Academy show how the people in their community are dealing with an influx of the overwhelmingly loud koki frog. The koki frog originally comes from Puerto Rico. However, the population on the east side of the island of Hawaii has approximately 23,000 frogs per acre. This is almost twice the densities per acre found in Puerto Rico. The island of Hawaii is the most infested island in the state of Hawaii, with 60,000 acres infested. In Pahoa, the frog's chorus reaches 70 decibels, which is almost louder than a vacuum cleaner. In Waimea, Hawaii, the population is rapidly growing and community organizations are taking matters into their own hands. We are formed um, from concerned community members that want to target the frogs, and we're all volunteer-run and donation-based and you'll see groups like that in Volcano that have been really effective and Kohala that have been really effective. The frogs are about the size of a quarter and we've been seeing them get bigger actually. We think that uh, the conditions here are really good for them. They have an abundant amount of food and they don't really have any predators. So I think they're actually becoming larger. We have seen some that are um, way bigger than average size. But it is a good thing to tell people because I think a lot of people have it in their head that they're very small and therefore they would be very hard to see, to find, but they're actually very visible once you do spot them. An individual frog um, making the sound is not that annoying, but when you do get a really large infestation, the decibel level can just get out of control and that's what causes the annoyance. I didn't realize how many frogs are actually here in Waimea until I started working for this job and uh, going to other parts of Waimea, but they are in Waimea more than you would think. If you have a pretty heavy infestation, you hear probably 10 or more in a concentrated area, then most likely the frogs are there, the frogs are probably breeding, there are females around, eggs are being laid, and in that scenario, I think the best approach would be citric acid. Use a sprayer and you make a broad sweeping spray with citric acid to try to come in contact with the frog skin, which will kill them. And that is an approved method by the EPA uh, to take care of frog infestations. However, if you just have one or two frogs in your yard, then it is effective to go out and hand catch. And it can actually be pretty fun. So you just go out there and follow the sound. You know, you're wearing boots and a headlamp. Um, and then once you locate the frog, oftentimes when you see it, you can just reach in and grab really fast. And then uh, you can put it in a plastic bag and then put that plastic bag in the freezer and they'll go to sleep in the freezer. 
once you get the hang of how big the frogs are, you understand what type of leaves would support their body weight and what type of leaves might be too narrow. So you're able to adjust where you look based on that information and based on the plants you know would be more likely to have frogs on them. So if you hear a frog, don't wait. It's easiest to get them when it's just one or two. If you wait and they reproduce, which they can at a very fast rate, then it can make that problem that much more overwhelming. We believe very much that the frogs can be controlled here in Waimea. This is Mariah Haight for Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Hikino. If you would like to comment on the story or anything you see on Hikino, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hikino can do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash hikino can do. We're back at Waianae Intermediate School in Oahu. Students on our campus are required to have three things on a daily basis. A school uniform, ID, and planner. We have two different colored shirts, a blue one and a gray one. Students must also have their IDs in order to eat breakfast and lunch, borrow books from the library, and use the internet on our school computers. And finally, the school planners help students to keep a log of their homework and also acts as a hall pass to go to the restroom, office, or health room during class time. Our next story takes us back to Hawaii Island, where students from Waiakea High School introduced us to a woman whose brush with death led to a deeper understanding of life. Surfers are known for hard-stopping moves. Waikia Intermediate Social Studies teacher Megan Silva never expected that the sport she loved the most would play a part in the worst day of her first life. It was um, January 27th on Tuesday, 2009, and I paddled out to go surfing that morning at a beach on Hilo called Honolii. And the last thing that I remember being awake was paddling out, and that's it. it sort of felt like fainting. Unconscious, Megan was brought to shore by an off-duty lifeguard and revived through CPR. But then I woke up in the hospital, in uh, the ICU unit. Little did she know that she had been living with a dangerous heart condition. The condition that I had, Al Kappa, discovered in babies when they're born, usually taken care of at birth. Mine was not found until I was 33. I learned later that I was the only female adult survivor with Al Kappa. Rather than let her condition tie her down, Silva was able to turn this harrowing incident into a positive one. Some advice that I have for heart patients is to be proactive. Being proactive means that being aware of your body and not ignoring signs about how you feel, um, not taking things for granted such as saying, oh, this is, has to be caused by stress because of my job or because I'm a parent or things like that. Knowing things will get better soon, she continues to keep a positive outlook on life. Thriving and moving forward after going through something like that is, I wouldn't say a lifelong struggle, but it's something that you have to just persevere and maintain and push through every day. It's been a difficult ride in some parts and also I would say sometimes very worrisome for our family. But in the end, what you realize is you have either two choices in life. You can either give up and let circumstances overcome you, or you can chin up and deal with circumstances as they come along your way. Megan Silva faces the challenges of surfing and teaching with a smile on her face. She looks forward to doing more of both, given a second chance at life. From Waikia High School, this has been Isaiah Poval, reporting for Hiki no. We're back for a close-up of Waianae Intermediate School. I'm standing in front of the banner, home of our Junior Sea Rider Marching Band. The Junior Sea Rider Marching Band is a unique band because it's become a community band in Waianae. Since the closing of the band program at Waianae High School five years ago, Waianae Intermediate's band has allowed high school students as well as alumni to participate in parades and performances throughout the year. Our next story takes place here in Oahu where students from Roosevelt High School teach us about the sacred nature of indigenous Hawaiian plants. 
When outsiders think of Hawaii, they likely think of tropical palm trees, coconuts, and succulent pineapples. But what they might not know is the history of Hawaiian plants and the impact they have on its culture. In the midst of development, few have maintained the importance of Hawaii's flora. On the island of Oahu in Kaneohe, Papahana Kua'ola, a Malama Aina based nonprofit organization, is actively contributing to the preservation of Hawaiian plants. Uh, we pretty much try and transform land back to Aina. You know, we try and transform the land that we see uh, back into a usable space, not only for people, but also for the other plants and other animals and insects that could utilize uh, the plants that we put into the ground. Their projects include the preservation of sacred land, educating the public on culture, ridding the area of invasive plant life, and raising awareness about Hawaii's invasive and endangered species problems. Right now we're known as the endangered species capital of the world and we're known for all these things going extinct and we're losing so many things. So it all sounds bad, but then you get to places like this and elsewhere with just communities saying, no, we can have a better future. Another way the Papahana Kuo'ola preserves Hawaiian culture is through traditional means, such as the use of chant. Every single plant would have a Hawaiian name, a Hawaiian use. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing, the knowledge that Hawaiians hold in the Oli and in the Mo'olelo about every single plant that's in the Hawaiian universe, you can find it there. That's why when people think about Hawaiian plants, they should stop thinking about only the plants that were brought in on the canoes because the whole plant world, uh, from ocean to the top of the mountain, was celebrated in some way and used. Papahana Kuo'ola and the passing down of chant have had a powerful effect on the preservation of culture. But citizens of Hawaii can also do their part to help. You have to think about Hawaiian culture as having its roots way in the past and yet still a living culture and moving forward into the future. There are certain things that require very serious research to make sure that what you are learning has its roots way back in the past. Um, you cannot just mix stuff up. You know, to, to preserve the Hawaiian culture, I think the, the easiest thing to do is to just try and live it. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't have to go out and, and you know, learn to speak fluent Hawaiian and have to dance hula or have to practice lua or have to, you know, it, it's just one component of that would be good or just being respectful to the land and, and, and basically understanding the land of that which you live. If we can maintain the true Hawaiian roots, maybe the flower that is Hawaii can blossom. This is Victor New from Roosevelt High School for Hikino. We're back at Waianae Intermediate School on Oahu, room K202, the home base of Junior C. Rider Television. Junior C. Rider Television runs a live daily morning broadcast to inform students of reminders, lunch, or any other announcements students will find helpful during the day. Our students also produce public service announcements, news, and future stories that are aired on our monthly show and are entered in various state and national competitions. In addition, Junior C. Rider Television students travel each year to the mainland to compete in the Student Television Network Convention's Middle School Contest. Our next story takes us to Kalani High School on Oahu, where students introduce us to an art instructor who uses ceramics to teach students about life. Mr. Toyama, a Kalani art and ceramics teacher, brings more to the table than just art skills. He teaches his students patience, compassion, and responsibility through the use of ceramics. I love my students, I love my family, um, and I love what I'm doing. I love teaching. And what Mr. Toyama teaches is how to deal with life's struggles through art. Struggling with something Mr. Toyama was very familiar with growing up. Growing up with a disability was really difficult for me. Watching everyone else read uh, really fluently you know, it give yourself self-doubt, your confidence gets low, you don't understand why you can't read, you know, where everybody else can. So it makes you feel kind of um, like you're not smart, you know. But I found other things to build my self-confidence. 
like I like art, so it really built me up, you know, and it um, gave me the self-confidence to just keep trying. For me, becoming a teacher was like a dream come true, you know. Um, I went and I did my art first, you know, uh, developed my skills. Then when I got a teaching position, it was my way to give back, you know. So learning up with a disability, it has helped me to understand how other students or other people uh, with disability think. And I've learned that through my students. You know, it, I use ceramics as a vehicle to teach students about life skills, being compassionate with other students, responsibilities. I teach them um, how to take defeat and also how to take success. When things break, you have to pick yourself up. You know, if you just give up, then you failed. Never give up on something you really want. It is difficult to wait, but more difficult to regret. This is Minkayla Carroll from Kalani High School for Hikino. We're back at Wainai Intermediate School on Oahu. Every year, Wainai Intermediate holds a career day to give students an opportunity to interact with industry professionals from an array of occupations. Guest speakers from various careers speak with 8th grade students about their job requirements, as well as special traits and characteristics that are needed in order to be successful in their positions. Students are able to see what types of opportunities are available and are able to begin to think about their own future career paths. We take you now to downtown Honolulu on Oahu, where students from St. Andrew's Priory tell the story of a young woman from China who started a new life at their school. Did you know that about 7.5% of all international students in Hawaii are from China? Shangguan Meng is a 19-year-old from Beijing, China. When she was attending high school in China, she got some disturbing news. Yuan soon figured out it was her mother. She didn't realize how serious the situation was until seeing her in the hospital. Soon after, her mother passed away. 有的时候还不能相信吗？然后他已经离开了我。嗯，因为可能不想去接受这些，然后在家里有人为看见一些东西会很伤心，所以我选择呃换一个地方去生活。Yuan discussed her feelings and thoughts on leaving with her brother, seen here on the right. Together, through the help of an agency to help Yuan choose the school she will attend. They chose St. Andrew's Priory because of its low teacher-to-student ratio, the alcohol education, and the amount of Chinese students attending the Priory. She likes participating in activities such as hula and choir. Yuan also gets individualized attention in ESL to better her English skills. As for the future, Yuan intends to graduate from a U.S. college in business with the possibility of helping her brother with his construction business in China. Although Yuan has gone through a lot over the past couple of years, she looks forward to graduating from high school in 2015 with the support of her friends and family. This is Emily Kurth from St. Andrew's Priory for Hikino. Let's get back to Wainai Intermediate School on Oahu. In our school, students are expected to read one million words by the end of the school year. 
At the end of each quarter, an assembly is held for all students who meet their quarterly goal of 240,000 words. At the end of the year, the students who have reached their million word goal are invited to attend a special field trip together. Our next story comes from the Hilo side of Hawaii Island, where students at Connections Public Charter School show us how Recycle Hawaii is coming up with creative ways to save the planet. Howard Shapiro is the Education Director for Recycle Hawaii and Coordinator for the Artists and Environment Program, which came to Big Island's Hilo Palace Theater for Earth Day in 2013. Recycle Hawaii is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting resource awareness in Hawaii. The major program that I coordinate is artists in the environment. We bring in musicians, dancers, singers, Native Hawaiian cultural practitioners to talk about their love for the island and how the environment affected their art. We also talk about recycling, resource awareness, and sustainability. So we're trying to connect the art you know, and have some fun with students, but also uh, talk about issues. So we hope that students especially will, will uh, really care about the earth, and they do. I've been doing this 10 years with Recycle of I. I've been going into schools for 20 years. The awareness now is so much greater, and uh, you know, the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Almost every student that I talk with knows that. And when I started, it was hardly any. But I mean, um, what I'm seeing is, you know, our great awareness and a great desire for students to care for the earth, Malama Ika Aina. Sahara Indio is one of the artists for the Artist and Environment Program. She uses Hawaii's natural resources to create many different pieces of art. I make all these things anyway, so now I get a chance to talk to students about being creative. Because we live here on the Aina where there's just so much plant life and it's almost impossible for me to go outside and not find something to drag home and see what I'm going to do with it. So everyone can find something here in Hawaii, something in their yard. That's what that song Yard Academy is about. We don't never have to leave charge of, in that case, it's our island because it's like our island home is our yard. Recycle Hawaii is dedicated to promoting recycling awareness throughout Hawaii and has helped over 50 schools become part of the Earth Friendly Schools Hawaii program and continues to give presentations throughout the islands. This is Cody Ikeda from Connection School in Hilo for Hikino. We're back on Oahu at Wainai Intermediate School. I'm here on our courts, which are not only used for physical education classes, but are also used for sporting events. Every year, Leeward Middle Schools participates in the Inter-School Athletic Tournament, or ISA. Each Leeward school is asked to host or help out with a certain event during the school year. Students are able to compete in various activities such as volleyball, softball, flag football, and more. There's also a chorus competition. The purpose of ISA is to establish relationships among the Leeward area middle schools while promoting sportsmanship and school pride. Y9 Intermediate has the honor of hosting two ISA events on our campus. We take you now to Campbell High School in the Eva District of Oahu for the story of a young sax player who lived all over the country before discovering his musical identity in Hawaii. We're here today at James Campbell High School to put the spotlight on the president of the James Campbell Band, Jake Hirsch. His incredible prowess with the saxophone has earned him a place at the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston. And today we've had the privilege of sitting down with him for an interview about his past and future as a musician in Hawaii. My main instrument is the tenor saxophone. Um, I also play guitar in the jazz band. But saxophone is really my voice and it's, it's something that lets me speak musically and helps me connect with other people and I, I want to take it further in life. Jake was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to a military family. Hawaii is the 11th place he's lived in so far. Being a military kid and living in Hawaii, you know, at first I, I felt a lot like an outsider. I felt very out of place and out of touch with the way that people speak, the food. Um, it, it was definitely not what I had seen before, what I'd 
seen when I was here on vacation or on TV. I got into so many different styles of music just because I moved here. Before, I'd, I hardly knew anything. I just knew a couple artists that I really dig. A different genre of music wasn't the only thing Jake discovered after moving to Hawaii. It's music, it's, it's not just here's an instrument, play it. It's, you gotta get immersed in the world of it. It's not about just showing off. It's not about being better than someone else. It's about sharing what you love with other people. The highlight of everything, you know, I'd, I've had a dream since middle school, since about eighth grade, um, to get accepted into the Berklee College of Music in Boston. And I stressed so hard. I, I didn't think I was gonna make it because I've moved around so much and my, uh, my playing is actually has a lot of holes in it just because I've gone through so many different programs and not settled down in one specific program. Jake began to lose sight of his future until he met his band instructor and mentor, Ryan Murakami. I settled down, I found a, a good and an amazing instructor, a really amazing instructor, and um, he just took me that much higher. Um, and I came out getting accepted into Berkeley and I'm gonna attend for the fall semester. So that's probably my proudest achievement. This is Jacob Roy from James Campbell High School for Hiki no. We're back on the Leeward Coast at Waianae Intermediate School. Like many schools across the country, Waianae Intermediate has an after-school All-Stars program that we call AS AS. Our AS AS program provides students with an opportunity to participate in many different extracurricular activities and enrichment programs, such as glee club, cooking class, martial arts, soccer, football, basketball, and many more. Since the program started three years ago, the number of activities and participants has significantly increased. Currently, Wine Intermediate has the largest after-school program in the state of Hawaii. Well, that's it for this week's show. We hope you enjoyed the stories from around our state and got to learn a little bit of what our school is like. Join us next week to see what the talented students of Hawaii can do on Hikino. Only on PBS Hawaii. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.